Hi, my name is Julio Mendez. I'm a high school physics and engineering teacher in Chicago, Chicago Public Schools. I teach at Von Steuben Metropolitan Science Center. Uh, I'm here to speak briefly about remote learning in our current situation. Um, remote learning uh, was thrust upon us by this world pandemic. Uh, it exposed a lot of our deficiencies and inequities. Uh, it showed which populations are most affected by these inequities. It showed some true need to reform systems, to more fully fund systems of education. Um, it showed, uh, it, it brought to light some of the things that, that us as teachers have been talking about and expressing for years uh, in terms of uh, students not having uh, stable situations, not having internet access, not having uh, home security, not having food security. And uh, it brought this all to light in a quick, quick, quick rush, right? Um, it also brought to light which uh, cities, which states, which districts, which school buildings, which networks, which people, which teachers were prepared to try to ease some of those inequities. Um, we're ready to take on some of the troubles and uh, work with it and be flexible. I thought that that was uh, a huge part of our learning is who is ready to make some of those changes. And hopefully um, there's, there's a lot more of us willing to make those changes than, than at first glance. Maybe the, it was just a shock at, be, at the beginning. Um, what worked in remote learning, um, relationships, building relationships with families, making phone calls, sending emails, uh, being diligent about contact and being sincere about concern. Uh, I think that was the most effective for myself and for some of the people that I know uh, did similar things. Oh, that that works and it works in person and it works in life. Uh, if you build a relationship with a student, uh, they'll be more willing to do the work no matter where they are. Now, foolproof? No. There's still a lot of situations that our students have to deal with that will inhibit their ability to learn remotely. Um, first of all, I think, uh, and I've said this for for a long time, our students all have uh, cellular devices for the most part, but they're not really tech savvy. They they don't really understand how the tech works. Um, so that's a deficiency that we have. Uh, there's uh, all of a sudden, I mean, just as an example, I'm in the third room uh, for this video. I, I had, this is not the room that I planned to, to make this video in, but because all of my family is at home, uh, my children, my wife, who's a teacher, we have to negotiate some of this stuff. Uh, some of our students don't have that option. Um, some of our students have to sh share devices with uh, siblings. Uh, so it's not perfect. Um, it helps to have a relationship, uh, but there's some things that are out of our control. Um, remote learning, I think, can be very, very productive for someone who's in a position that has all the abilities, that has all the technology, that has all the consistency in their life to do that learning remotely. Uh, I think the rest of us, and I include myself in that, in that bunch, uh, need relationships, need face-to-face -face contact, need affirmation, need uh, guidance. And so it's difficult. Um, another aspect of remote learning, which is very troubling 
that a lot of my colleagues have mentioned also is uh, staring at avatars or letters on a screen when you're trying to teach something and, and not having that instant feedback, that glimmer in their eye or that troubled look of not understanding. We don't know what to do from that point, right? We don't have those cues to work off of as teachers that seem that seem so natural to us now because this is what we do. Uh, we don't have those. They're not in front of us. Um, so coaxing kids who, again, seem very adept and natural at being on camera for their apps, their social media, um, it's a different story when you ask them to perform, when you ask them to sit in a classroom and, and take notes, when you ask them to answer questions about the topic, when you ask them to try to solve a problem. It's a, it's a different it's a different area, different arena. So um, they're not comfortable with it. And, you know, I've attended several meetings uh, for teachers where there's a lot of us that aren't comfortable with that either. Maybe it's because, again, we're sharing rooms or we're negotiating spaces uh, or um, we are suffering from some of the things our students are suffering from, like depression a uh, lack of social contact, uh, not wanting to see people because we're in this deprived state uh, for that social contact. So uh, the other thing that we had to deal with here at, towards the end of our school year is the, the social unrest for the unfortunate uh, killing of, of Mr. George Floyd and all the repercussions socially that 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 produced um, here in Chicago, there was some added violence that might not be reported nationwide, but we have to remember that our kids are dealing with this on a daily basis, right? Our students not only already have that fear when encountering law officials, now that is brought to our attention 24 seven in the media uh, rightly so by protesters, peaceful protesters who want change, who deserve that change. But our kids, how do we expect them to keep learning and thriving or try to learn a new system of, of uh, learning in a remote style when they have all this upheaval and uncertainty in their lives and neighborhoods? So... The other thing that I think is my biggest takeaway from remote learning is compassion, empathy. Uh, learn more of it. Ask for more of it. Uh, have given more than I've ever given in my life. Uh, just because I need to understand and affirm that our students are in these bad places. Uh, physically and mentally and spiritually and emotionally. So we need to be there for them. Um, what remote learning looks like in the fall, if that's what happens, I, I can't imagine trying to meet 150 new students virtually, right? It was so difficult to get all the kids that I had built relationships with throughout this year um, to come on and, and and interact in the same ways we interacted in our classroom, um, which for whatever reason, it was one of the best years of my teaching career as far as the relationships and the interactions in the classroom. So having had those six, seven months ahead of time to kind of bank on those relationships and still had what personally feels like abysmal uh, progress in the remote learning arena. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like uh, in the fall if we have to do this again or a hybrid of this. How are we going to build those relationships? When can we start building those relationships? Just because uh, without them, we're not going to get this generation of students to interact and love school or tolerate school or want to be in school. So I think that 
therein lies the challenge for us uh, over the next couple of months of planning and strategizing what what tactics can we come up with to create those bridges for our students and remind them that although the world sometimes uh, treats them badly, gives them bad situations that in our classrooms, in our spaces, they're safe and they can learn and they can make mistakes and they can grow. Um, that's my challenge. That's our challenge as a school system, as a society. And hopefully some of these changes that are happening in, because of the unfortunate passing of so many of our of our black citizens at the hands of the people that are sworn to serve and protect. Uh, hopefully if these changes go a long way and, and they keep going and we keep changing them and showing because that's a direct example to our students of how much we value their lives or don't value their lives. So that's a challenge. That's a challenge for all of us. Thank you for listening.